just a quick update on the inspirational poster from the World of Cross Stitch magazine. Um, so I've made a bit of progress. I've done a fair bit of back stitching. Um, there's not a lot of it, and I've made some choices that aren't necessarily in the pattern, so I'll explain those. So down here, I guess those are like bits of grass or the flower stems. Those I just did to the pattern. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but the the flagpole is charted in a very dark gray. So I switched that out for brown just so it would show better. Um, I'm still debating whether or not I want to outline the basket of the hot air balloon. Uh, I did all the back stitching on the ticket. It's a little bit hard to see, so I double. I used two strands to stitch the words travel and then over here the word ticket. Um, this I've already talked about. This was uh, meant to be in a color that would have disappeared into the black fabric, so I switched that out for two strands of the teal. Uh, the back stitching here, not quite done. There's a line that needs to go down the middle of the, the boat there. Um, this was originally charted. The back stitching here was originally charged to be two shades of blue, and I went with one. Um, the other piece is when I was doing this, especially up here, it just wasn't looking right when I did a back stitch. So I ended up doing these massively long stitches, and I'm hoping I won't regret it. Same thing here. I don't know, it just looked neater and tidier to me. So I'm hoping that it won't. Um, it won't go become loose or saggy or anything like that. And then moving up, I did debate with myself whether I wanted to outline the word miles. On the camera I can see it pretty clearly, but in some light, um, the medium brown and the light brown are not similar, but close enough that it can be a little bit tough to make out the word. So I'm, I'm still debating that one for myself. The clouds still need um, a bit of backstitching. Then we get up here. The sun, I did the backstitching on the sun right away. Um, what I did was, that backstitching is the same color as this orange. Oh, and I'm realizing there's a medium orange that needs to go in those little holes there. But anyways, what I did was I stitched the orange around in uh, two strands the cross stitches and then I I ended the I ended the floss on the back but I only ended one of the strands and then the other one I kept going and with that I completed the back stitch. Um, again this was a a switch for instead of a color that would have blended in the black back. Um, these letters for the word thousand they need to be outlined still. Airplane gets a little bit of stitching uh, to attach the, the wings and the wheel to the body of the airplane. And what I'm missing is the word a uh, and journey. And the letter A is quite large as you can see by what I've started. And again, I did that long stitch thing here. I know it's it's meant to be back stitches, but I don't to me, I, I like that look better, so I'm hoping it won't come back to bite me. The word journey also has um, kind of two lines of backstitch as well that need to be done. But I'm getting, I'm getting close. Working on this has made me want to make a Q-snap. Um, so I've been looking at tutorials on floss tube, and, and the reason is because this is a fairly long piece of fabric, and I'll just show you here. Um, I've actually started something else here, and this is oriented like it would go that way. Um, but I haven't gotten around to cutting it yet and, and serging the edge, or not serging, I don't have a serger, but zigzagging the edge. But um, that's from a, a fairly old magazine. I'll do a, a better um, a better 
What am I trying to say? I'll do I'll do a better clip of that when that's ready to show. But I do want to make a a, a cover so that uh, so that I can roll this fabric out of the way. Um, if it weren't for the fact that this is black fabric, I think it'd be pretty dirty by now. So there it is, getting close to finished, which is kind of exciting. Um, I have no money for framing right now. So I'm thinking of making it into a padded something or another. We'll see. Again, I'll watch a bunch of tutorials and decide. But there you go. So I'll, I'll leave off this clip for now. And um, I hope you enjoy it. I don't know. I really like how the colors kind of almost pop off the background in the black. It did mean that I had to do a fair bit of adjusting because um, it was designed for, for a white or a light fabric, but I'm glad I made that decision. Okay, so the things you learn on floss tube. It's fascinating. Um, this is some stitching done by my niece. She's about four and a half years old. Um, she chose the colors. They were actually left over from my um, my Witsy and Booth um, birth announcement. Um, and so what I did was I started, and I'll come in here so you can see. I did a loop start for her. That would be an ending, actually. There you go. I did a loop start for her, and then she decided where she wanted to, and she. I, I said a few times, you know, you'll be able to do more stitches if you make them shorter. But her artistic eye led to these decisions. Really, really long stitches. Um, and then when she wanted to end, I would just end with a pin stitch. Because with such long stitches, there wasn't really anything to anchor the back. Um, and it was... It was a really neat way for her to be able to do her own thing and not be restricted by a pattern and and um, having to try to make little X's and not really understand what's going on. And but at the same time, to develop some familiarity with um, finding the holes. And she knows that when you pull the needle through, you have to hold it so that the thread won't slip out and those kinds of things. You start to get. Uh, comfortable with the fabric. She likes she likes it uh, watching for a while when I stitch and um, she likes pulling the needle through for me so I thought this was the next step. Um, and I wanted to mention this was not my idea. I got this idea from Megan Wright W-R-I-G-H-T Megan Wright who has a floss tube channel and she showed in one of her floss tubes um, she had done this with a daughter of hers put some fabric in the hoop and then I think in the end she signed it. I don't think we're quite done. I think the next time I go over maybe she'll want to do some more. But I thought this was a fabulous way um, to introduce a child to stitching and it, it's low pressure. We get to spend some special time together and and she seemed to really enjoy it. And then when she was done it was easy enough to, to stop for a while and she could um, go and pursue another activity. And I have to say, this might just be a proud tante talking, but I kind of like how those three colors work together. The the mild sort of minty green with the lighter periwinkle blue and the pinkish reddish bit there. I like that. She's got good taste, my niece has. To continue. So, I was really excited to keep going because getting so close. There's that A starting to take shape. And then I thought, well, before I continue on the A, I want to do some back stitching. And so I back stitched the clouds. You can see that there. And as I was doing the clouds, I realized, oh right, the, the ship has a bit of steam or smoke or something coming out of the smokestack there. 
And that's when I ran into problems because I realized as I came around this curve here, I realized I was running into the cloud. And when I looked at the pattern and I've blocked off most of it, I'm just gonna show this teeny weeny little part of it. It won't give away any useful part of the design. So there's basically two stitches there between the smoke and the cloud. And on the other side of the cloud, and I'm not showing that much of the pattern, um, there's it's it's kind of equidistant from the next motif. So I tried I tried restitching, reinventing the swirly bits here. I I tried kind of reconfiguring them, and um, it just it still looked a bit squished. And and this wasn't looking balanced or it just didn't it just didn't sit well. The thing is I was trying to avoid taking out the cloud because I realized I based this really long line on the edge of the cloud. It's supposed to be three stitches away from the edge of the cloud. It is three stitches away from the edge of the cloud, but the cloud is in the wrong place. So I've decided I'm going to stitch this as charted, I'm going to take out the cloud, I'm going to move it over a stitch because I think the cloud being closer to that long stitch won't be as jarring as the cloud being too close to the smoke. And as you can see I started, I took out the, the edge of the back stitching here so that I could finish the smoke and then tackle or retackle this cloud. I'm also remembering I'm gonna have to stitch some birds. They're charted in I think a brown. No, I don't know if I want to do them in brown. We'll see. I think they'll get a different color. There's little bits that that I'm realizing I forgot. Like I still haven't done the back stitch that goes straight down there. But back off here a bit. We're getting there. There you go. All right, hopefully the next time I show this to you, I can say, look, look, I have a finish. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, talk to you soon. Time for a bit of a stash acquisition slash haul slash whatever you'd like to call it video. Um, this is the result of quite a few orders in the last while. I have a couple more coming. This is maybe the last month and a half or so. I have a couple more coming, but they're coming via uh, Canada Post because I ordered them off Amazon.ca and uh, if they don't get in sync with their labor force slash union anytime soon, it looks like we're in for a pause on mail. So thought I'd show you. Um, I've wanted to. I've never stitched a stocking before, and I'd really like to. So I saw these. A number of these are um, enabled by people on FlossTube, and I don't even know anymore who it was. So I'm sorry I can't give credit. But I bought these. Sorry about the glare. Um, what I really like about them is they have very different styles. So you kind of have the cute, um, the cute little kid. You've got the more um, vintage or realistic looking. Uh, there's a few different styles and um, I have the other book as well and here you can see a couple more. So there you go this one's a little more zoom in, uh, a little more vintage the snow globe stocking and then we've got cute with animals and so on and this one would really be for I guess a dog lover um, but there's quite a few uh, 14 and 15 respectively. This one has 15. Um, so that should keep me stitching for a long time. And together with this order I also got this chart. You don't see a whole ton of Canada themed pieces. Um, this one calls for a lot of specialty threads and I don't know yet if that's what I'll use or I'll sub out or what but um, for now, I just I just have the chart. I thought that would be fun to stitch. And I, I teach social, grade six social studies, 
and in my province that means we do um, Canadian history uh, from Confederation onwards. So this might be fun to show them and talk about the symbolism and what do the symbols mean. And the, the, the um, chart, if you look inside, the chart actually explains the different symbols, their significance and so on. So I thought that was kind of neat. On to the next thing. My first Lizzie Kate, well-behaved women rarely make history. Um, I'll just, I'll stitch this in the DMC. It came with a little button, a little yellow button that goes there. Um, and I have someone in mind for this. Someone whom it really suits. Around the same time, I also got, I believe these colors are only available as a package. Oh, glare, sorry. Uh, and I haven't bobbinated them yet, but there they are. And I also, around that time, I got, this is all around that time in the last month or so, I got these week's dye works. Um, this green, it's, it's, um, it's not as gray as it's looking in the, pic, in the uh, screen. This green is for my Storytime sampler, my Frosted Pumpkin Storytime sampler uh, frames. The other colors, I'm considering using them um, to fill in the backgrounds of the different um, frames. This one in particular, I think I was considering filling in the background of the um, Sherlock Holmes. These two whites are different whites. Um, this one is White Lightning. This one is Icicle. Icicle is quite a bit lighter. White Lightning has, there you can see it, um, it's got this sort of very gentle beige variegation. Sorry. Right. I've had these two magazines um, for a bit now. I haven't stitched anyone f anything from this yet, but I really do want to stitch the um, Flower Fairy. It's got some good childhood memories with that. And oh, and there's a lot of camping uh, motifs in this one. And I've got a friend that'll be perfect for. I just haven't decided exactly how I want to do it. This came in either the magazine I just showed you or the one that I'm going to show you that you can kind of see underneath this kit. The Ada is awful. It's really hard to get the needle through, but um, it's such a small stitch that it doesn't matter. It'll be a gift for, I don't know, maybe a niece or something. That's how far I am on that one. This one has been like, if I'm done all my prep and I'm done all my marking and I'm sitting at school with nothing to do, it's easy enough to haul out of my bag and work on for a bit. Uh, this is the other magazine and this magazine I've been using a lot because it has that in it. Um, there are a few other designs that I'm interested in. They're not shown on the cover and I'm not gonna page through it now. The world of cross stitch. The world of cross stitching, sorry. Um, I've actually started this already, so the chart is looking a bit, a bit used. I bought this because I'd like to stitch it for my mom. I'm stitching it using a green DMC Pearl Cotton. Um, if I remember the story correctly, and I'll have to talk to her to make sure I get it straight, I I believe my mom actually worked in the Miller Orphan Homes uh, in Britain. So uh, the, the chart actually explains some of the tradition behind this um, piece. You'll notice that it says presented by Claudia Dutcher, not designed. So what she did is she has at least one sampler made by a Miller Orphan um, to show her abilities in needlework. Um, the thing about the Miller Orphan Homes, and yes, I know that's an umlaut and that's a German thing, but he operated in England. Um, he believed that instead of um, seeing orphans as a drain in society and, you know, stick them in a workhouse, and um, he believed that they should be uh, trained to be um, useful members of society because he believed in their inherent value. Um, and... So, my, um, no, he has long since passed. Um, my mom went to culinary school, and back in those days, 
uh, if you were a guy, you graduated and you became a chef. And if you were a girl, well, you know, you could have all the same skills, but you couldn't possibly be a chef. So my mom was a cook uh, in one of these schools, I, I believe, if I've got the story straight. So when I saw this, I thought, I, I have to pick that up. So I've started work on this already, on some Anne cloth. And we're almost at the bottom of the pile here. This is three charts. Oh, sorry about the glare. I've got overhead lights. Does that help? Kind of, a little bit. So I've stitched something by Carol Emmer, and I can't off the top of my head remember what it is, but I have stitched something by her. And I saw these, and I, I thought, that's really neat. i got to snap that up. I think this might have been a stash unload thing. Maybe? Can't remember for sure. Anyways, um, there are three of them. So there's, I guess, what you would call the holy family, plus a donkey and a cow. And then there are camels and wise men. And then there are shepherds and sheep. And I really like, oh, and an angel. I like this design. And yes, I know it's not bibli biblically accurate to place wise men and shepherds at the same time in the same place. The wise men came along a fair bit later, uh, basically when Jesus was a toddler. But we smush them together for the sake of tradition. So I didn't notice this before, but coming a bit closer, little tassels there, some beading. The detail's really neat. I really like it. So eventually I'd like to stitch that up. I think on an even weave. I don't think I want to use a linen. I'll use an even weave. Weight the bottom somehow and see what I can do with it. And then I really like Beatrix Potter pieces. I'm currently working on a Christmas one. And um, I don't know if I'll ever stitch this. I would like to though. Um, I just won't frame it in peach. Because 80s. And this is what arrived today. So on Stash Unload, Lady was selling uh, these 12 for $10 US. And luckily they arrived today. Um, tomorrow is a holiday here in Canada and Monday is national holiday in the States. So um, I was able to pick them up. The border guard thought it was a bit weird that I popped across for just something that's worth $10, but you know, he's not a cross stitcher. Um, there's one that's doubled. I think it's these two or these two. Sorry. <laughs> these two or these two or maybe... I don't know. Anyways, two of the white or clear ones. The rest are all unique. Um, they're all uh, sealed on the edges as far as I could tell. They're all full packs. Um, there are some antique glass. There are some petite seed beads and there are some glass seed, or glass seed beads, yeah. So I thought that was a really good deal. And there's at least one set in there that will work for a pattern that I'd like to try soon. Um, if you have any questions about anything I just showed you, uh, please just ask and I'll, I'll happily answer in the comments below. Okay, the great push continues. So now I've stitched the smoke slash steam as charted. The cloud that was there is gone. The dark orange bits have been added to the sun, so as long as I don't find a mistake there eventually, that's done. And while I was working with the dark orange, I realized there is one, one stitch there. So I added that. Sorry for the... I, I really hope nobody's getting seasick. Right. So the next job, I guess, will be to center the cloud and restitch it. And maybe I'll reward myself with some nice, easy um, dark teal up here. And I should also mention, uh, I made a mistake somewhere in here with the... Um, with the stepping down. This this last bit should only be five stitches, but that I'm not redoing. Because I don't, 
it won't matter in the long run and yeah not redoing it all right see you again once I've got that cloud in and then maybe a little bit more right there right there's where the cloud needs to go see you again when that cloud is in and then I'll add some more before I film again all right here's yeah, hoping third time's the charm I'm trying to figure out how to how to make sure that um, when I'm filming we get a landscape orientation instead of portrait and um, it's worked once for me but then it didn't work the next time so I'm, that's why I'm refilming this to see if I can figure it out so I mentioned in my stash position this Bristol table topper and a bit about the, the history behind it and so on and um, I wanted to show you the actual thing um, so here we go all right, so um, I guess the first thing is um, what I'm stitching with. It's a, a pro cotton, a DMC pro cotton. And what I really love about it is the texture that you get. There's this, I don't know, it's got this neat little bump to it. Um, doesn't lie super flat, but the stitches, I don't know, I find the stitches do look fairly uniform. I, I like it. Um, I'm really enjoying the way that some of the motifs interact with the um, the and cloth, the way the and cloth is designed. Um, and there's such a variety too. So we've got, sorry about the finger there. Um, we've got alphabets and numbers. And then there are these kind of lacy... Um, geometric designs. There's a corner one. There's a corner one. There's a couple X's. There's some other. There's a heart. Um, this is a bird. So that would be the head. That would be the body, the tail, the wing. Um, George Miller, the man who ran the orphanage uh, or founded and ran it um, during his lifetime, um, he was he was a man of faith. Um, I think he could accurately be described as a, a devout Christian. Um, he walked, he, he lived his faith. He didn't just preach it. And so it's not surprising that the, the orphans who um, were at his orphanage would include uh, Christian motifs in their work. And then each corner has um, three of these leaf designs. Another one will go here. So the whole thing is edged in something called nun stitch, and I did a tutorial on that if you're interested. But I, I completed the tutorial, and then I completed the border the whole way around. And what this does is, um, if you haven't watched the tutorial, what this stitch does is uh, it stops the the material from fraying, which is why I decided I wanted to do this border stitch the whole way around, so that I wouldn't accidentally um, just from wear and tear end up running out of um, threads, like having threads interfere with the stitching. But once I'd done the whole thing, if you look closely here, um, I, I noticed that there was space for two stitches. This thing is stitched over two. So there's space for two stitches here and it just looked a little bit off to me. So I went back and I reread and, and re reread the instructions and I looked at the picture on the front and I realized I'm pretty sure that this nun stitch should only be one stitch away, so two threads away from the cross stitch. So to stitch the nun stitch, you, you pull a thread and that kind of gives you a, a marker, a guideline. And I thought that I should put the... Um, what looks like the top of the stitch in that ditch created by the pulled thread. But now I realize it should have been the bottom of the stitch resting there. So <laughs> I've started to remove the stitches. I'll just pan along here. Sorry about the, there we go. So I've started to remove stitches, but that gets tiresome pretty quickly. Um, so once I've made a big enough gap, panning back there, I I started to stitch correctly before I'd removed it all. So where I'm pointing here, this was the incorrect bit. And here is how it should be done. With the, um, the bottom leg resting in the ditch, not the top of the stitch resting in the ditch. 
luckily I really enjoy doing this stitch so it's not um, a complete bummer that I have to undo and redo. And while we're at it, nice close-up of my fingers, um, I have decided that I will not apologize for not having perfectly manicured fingers. Now I might apologize for them not being apparently under my nails is not entirely clean. I was um, it was the last day of school today and I was doing a lot of lifting and moving dusty things about so that's where that's from. Um, but I've noticed people often will if they don't have the perfect manicure they'll um, they'll apologize and I don't know I don't I mean if my fingers are really grossing you out then I'm sorry but I have short nails anyways I used to bite my nails and so um, they're quite low and I'm just not I'm not into those things girly things like that and the other piece is I play piano and so I can't ha I can't handle it if my fingers are clicking against the keys so I keep them fairly fairly short um, so you, you you won't hear me apologizing for the state of my fingers and you definitely won't feel me judging you for the state of my of your fingers um, when you're showing I guess if I were a professional that would be another matter but I'm not all right that's the Bristol table topper I'm pretty sure I mentioned my um, my cross stitch journal in maybe my first floss tube but I wanted to go a little bit more in depth because I know different people have different methods and I enjoy seeing how other people work it I know uh, a lot of people use uh, different apps for this and um, that's super convenient but I really do prefer a digi or a not digital an analog version what I do is based on the concept of bullet journaling and if you're, you're not familiar with it just look it up uh, on YouTube there are many 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 um, videos of people sharing their bullet journals and uh, for different purposes and I just adapted the original ideas it can get pretty fancy schmancy the original um, idea is fairly straightforward and I adapted that for cross stitch I use a um, it's a moleskin um, journal craft paper outside uh, there's a sewn spine and then the papers uh, have this graph yeah, thing on. Alright, so to set this up, the thing that makes it work, being analog, um, is your table of contents. Sorry about the shadows, I've got overhead lights and I don't know how to mitigate that. So there's my table of contents and the, the advantage here is that if I run out of space, because I had already put this on page three, my earth project on page three, and so I couldn't continue my project list, but the table of contents um, enables me to see very quickly that I just continued that on page 17, and I purposefully leave a bit of space there so that I can do that. You'll see right away this is not perfect, and that's the whole point. Um, you can, you can kind of make it work for you. So after the table of contents, I did number every page obviously so that I can keep my table of contents accurate. Um, I started out with project list. On my project list I include the title of a piece, um, the page where there are more details to be found. Now the first ones in my project list are all really old whips so I have no idea when I started it and that's why there's a question mark there. Here we've got um, it's just a simple graphic so that I can easily see um, a very general idea of how far I'm done on it. When I finish, I, I write the date in and then if I uh, finally finish it, frame it or whatever, then I write that date as well. Um, this is the only one in here I think that isn't started yet. Everything else are, are whips. Some of them might even qualify as UFOs. So I can see at a glance, you know, if I decide I want to work on something I haven't worked on for a while, or I want to work on something that's closer to being done, or, um, yeah, I can see that at a glance. Um, very basically, when I add details, is the title. 
And then I'll include um, details of the kit. So it was a Maria von Scharenberg kit by Lanart, this earth one. Um, who it's intended for. So this is my niece's birth announcement. And then any notes on changes or ideas or thoughts or concerns or problems I'm having, I'll jot that down. Um, this was one of my Stitch Mania. I didn't, it wasn't a start. It was a, I pulled a bunch of whips to work on for the most part in Stitch Mania. So I noted that there. I thought that might be interesting to look back on. Um, so as I mentioned, my, I ran out of room, obviously on page two of the project list. So I continued the project list on page 17. And I'll just turn there. So here you can see I know what date I started. This is my hate. There's very little of it done so far. I'm, I'm kind of thinking I need to get a frame um, and a stand before I continue the hate. So there we go. There was a, a Stitch Mania finish. Not fully finished, but finished. And then if I turn to my inspirational poster page, there we go so this one I had quite a few floss color changes so I listed them all here it's handy for when I'm doing um, floss tube and I can quickly check what the details are and like I said it's fine making mistakes is permitted um, misspelled the word single there um, if you watch a few of the bullet journal um, uh, YouTubes some people really get into, you know, which which writing tools they use and so on. Uh, mine's really simple. I prefer this. It's a ballpoint, but it has a, I don't know, the ink is a bit different. Uniball Onyx. Got it from work. And I actually want to order a whole box of these because I like them so much. Um, this is a black one, but you can get blue and red. Maybe there are other colors too, but we have the blue and red. It's a fairly fine point. There you go. And um, it just writes really smoothly. I like that. Okay, back to cross stitch world. Oh yeah, I even took notes on the um, the Jobelin here. I noticed that as I'm stitching two over two on the 20 account Jobelin, I'm not getting the greatest coverage. And I actually don't mind it for this particular project, but I thought I would note it down just in case... Um, I decide to do something else on the fabric and I want more coverage. Something else that I did a little bit different. Uh, the Mill Hill kits and the Christmas ornaments, I realized after doing the first Mill Hill kit, I think, um, bead kit, that I, if I was going to do a separate page for each one, I'd fill this notebook up very quickly. Now they're not expensive notebooks. I get them from Amazon.ca, but I'm sure you can get them elsewhere too. Um, but the point is to have a, a convenient system and not have a bajillion uh, notebooks going. So for Mill Hill and for Christmas ornaments, I do multiple ones per page. I still have the notes, and so then I keep my started, done, finished information on, on the detail page, not on the project list page. Um, that's basically what it amounts to. Um, for me, it's it's a really handy, I mean, it's a handy size. You can kind of see compared to my hand there. It's about half of an 8.5 by 11 paper, more or less. Oh, a bit smaller. And, um, and I, I really enjoy using it. I've stuck with it so far. It's come in handy. I even have a list in here somewhere of my, um, my floss tube notes. I haven't been very good at sticking to it, but I do have a list. All right, let's get back to reg regularly scheduled programming, which is uh, inspirational poster.